Welcome back to the last in the OWASP Top 10 Explained tutorial series. And in this one, number A10, we're looking at unvalidated redirects and forwards. So what is it? So we're talking here about any time that your application forwards the user to another URL um, based on any information being passed in using the request or any information that the user has stored or anything like that then you should check where you're being asked to redirect to. And the reason this is important is if your site is what we call an open reflector, an attacker can use your site to bounce a user onto an attacker's site, but giving the user that extra bit of trust because they've seen your website and they know that that's a real website, that when they then get forwarded to an attacker's site, they don't they're not going to notice they're going to think it's okay because they got sent there by your site and um even though it's not very common it's uh, can end up being quite a serious issue and i'll demonstrate what that looks like in a minute so because it isn't very common in some ways it shouldn't be on the list but at the same time the consequences as we can see can be very significant because effectively the uh, end user, the victim, is going to trust the attacker's site a lot more than they should because they were sent there by the vulnerable web application. So let's visit, visit our trusty steed, um, our trusty uh, test site. So here I've got login page. If I click login and if I log in, put in my password, not that, that, log in, you notice I'm kind of back at the index page, which is great. That's kind of what's expected. But have you noticed that in a lot of websites, you can have something where somebody clicks on a, a site that's restricted and then they get something like this. Return URL equals, let's say, um, I don't know, book index or something like that. So that's kind of valid. I tried to click on the books page uh, I wasn't logged in, so it's redirected to me to here. It's passed in the return URL, and so I go, yeah, I'm going to log in, which is great. Keep pressing the wrong key, and I log in, and uh, it's a, you know because I used the wrong thing. It should have index PHP in there, but it it takes you to there, and it's all again. It's kind of that's the designed functionality, but the the point of the vulnerability, the, the mistake that has been made here, is what happens if I go to login and instead of a relative URL, what if I have one that looks like this? So this is one, let's say an attacker has sent me this link in an email and said, hi, we're calling from my company or this email is from my company. We need you to click on this link to verify your username and password. And they could use all the usual phishing language. You need to do it urgently. We will lock your account out if you don't. We think we've had a breach, so you just need to reset your password, whatever they might use. You kind of look at it and go, well, it looks all right, doesn't it? You know, YouTube test, so that's all correct. And yeah, I'm pretty clever, so I'm happy. I click on the link and here I am on the real site. And I think, fantastic. So I log in. And I type what I think my password is and I click log in and it's like, oh, oh, OK, I must have got that wrong. So maybe I'll just log in again because I must have mistyped my password because we all do that all the time, don't we? Ah, but hang on a second. Let's have a look at this URL. What's going on here? Well, what's happened here is by passing in an absolute return URL to the good site, the vulnerable site, I've then been redirected to this attacker's site, but the attacker has copied and pasted the code from the real site, so I didn't even notice that that happened. What I thought had happened is I typed in my login incorrectly. Now, of course, if this is the attacker's site, when I submit this, then obviously the attacker is going to get my login information for the real site, and they then get full access to everything that I have access to. So that's the, the basic problem. That's is quite simple to understand. Uh, I'm being redirected to a URL that hasn't been checked properly. So let's look at what we've got here at the minute. So what I've done by default, this is effectively a common way that a vulnerable web application will implement it. It will say, if there's a return URL, redirect to it. Otherwise, 
go home, whatever, whatever it might be, stay on the same page, go to your profile page. It doesn't really matter. It does something like that. But as you can see here, there's no checking um, being applied. So if there's no checking, how do I know whether this is a good URL or a bad URL? And the answer is, at the minute, I don't. So what can I do? Well, one of the things that's quite cool in Yi2, and it, I'm sure it exists in some frameworks, is this idea that you don't use a return URL at all. What happens is every time you request a page that gets stored in your session, and then when you log in successfully, you simply call go back because you will then go back to whatever page invoked the login. So what does that look like? And I hope it's going to work because it was broken before. Um, let's go back to the correct site before I get very confused. So let's log out again. So if I went to log into a normal site like Books, so Books is restricted, and notice I've been redirected to login, but there is no return URL. So Y2 doesn't use the query string because it's a vulnerability. So what happens here then is I log in, and we already saw in the code, this is going to call go back, and guess what? I'm back at the page I started on. So that's a really cool way to avoid the problem of um, user submitted um, return uh, URL information. But if that's not possible, um, or if that's going to take too long to implement, another very simple way to do it, or it's simpler, certainly simpler in .NET than it is in PHP. Oh, what's going on there? Doesn't, doesn't like that. Hang on a sec. Try again. Mm. My goodness me. Because just because one line doesn't have anything on it. Right, so the other thing that we can do with the return URL is we can make sure that it's a relative URL. Now, PHP doesn't have any built in way of doing this, which is a bit rubbish, I think, in this day and age. Maybe the latest versions do. It looks like you can do it in a library or you can do it using a horrible load of code like I've done, but it kind of gives you the idea. What it's doing here is it's saying, if the start of the string is a single slash and not a double slash, then I'm happy to use it. Double slash is shorthand for um, a, an absolute URL using whatever the current page scheme is. So that might be an absolute URL. But if it's got one forward slash, that means it's a relative URL. Um, and that's just a very, very simple check. If um, in some ways that check should actually be inside here, because if it's not set, um, then that's probably all going to crash anyway. So let's just move that in there just in case. And then we're going to take that bit from there and put that there. Obviously, all the tabbing has gone all over the place. Um, that's, yeah. Hopefully, you can see what's going on. So if we've set the return URL, it's going to do a check very rubbish check uh, and they'll return to it if the check fails then we'll throw a forbidden exception 403 and if the return url is not set then we just go home like normal so this is another way to get around it so what happens now is let's log out so if we go to log in and we put uh, return url equals and let's say we just do index.php now the the check isn't made until after we log in we do that and it will return to index.php, which is great. It's kind of what we want it to do. But if an attacker tries to do something like this, so it goes in there. Now, I could actually run the test even on the get, but uh, we don't really have to. It doesn't really matter too much. But what happens now is if I try and do this, I'm now hopefully going to get 403. Why? because I've got an absolute URL and that little rubbish test I'm doing in here um, is going to fail because it doesn't begin with a single slash. It begins with HTTP. Um, in .NET, there's a much easier way to do this. In, uh, in .NET, you can use the URI class, create a new URI, passing this as the argument, and then you can call um, my URI dot is relative, I think is the, the property. So much easier in, um, in .NET than it is in Java. I think there's a class for URLs as well called URL rather than URI, if I remember. In PHP, it's a bit harder, but you can see even with some basic testing, 
some basic code is better than nothing so even this is not perfect but it's blocked what I need it to block um, and what that means now is every return URL which I should have control over in my links if I'm using a return URL I just need to make sure I put a slash at the start of it um, and then everything else should work so it's really quite simple kind of doing this it's really a code review action so the code review action is have I used uh, any redirects and if I have have I provided suitable validation for the return URL um, if you can avoid using redirects, avoid using redirects. So like I say, ye2 avoids them by using this kind of go back functionality, which is pretty cool. Um, if you can avoid them, that's even better. Uh, you could use, you can do other tricks. OWASP boys recommend weird stuff like rather than using an actual URL in the return URL, you could use a code and then you could use the code to look up a, a URL to return to. But I think probably the go back feature is probably a bit easier to do than that or just do the test for this. So that's um, that's really it, I think. Um, so to fix it, there's only a one liner on this. Check all the places in code that redirects the user and make sure that the URL passed in is checked for your application. So you could it depends in your application that you own if you only ever redirect to one page then hard code it, do you know what I mean? If um, if you re redirect to three or four different pages, you could actually have a check that just says, is it one of those three or four pages? So depending on what your application does, perform some kind of check, make sure it only contains the characters that you're looking for, so you could make sure it doesn't contain uh, a colon or something like that, which might mean it's a dodgy URL. Um, and just do it that way, it's purely a code review checklist item dead easy to to fix and in most cases hopefully fairly dead easy to block as well um, and let's just try and nail this as another vulnerability that we just want to see disappear um, for good so that's all the top 10 I'll, I will do a little short video or I say short then ever very short about how to kind of tie all of this together and how to kind of make it a practical reality because all this stuff's interesting but it's only we could say it's very academic um, until we know how to apply it in a real life situation so i'll probably knock together a little powerpoint over that and hopefully give you some kind of starting point uh, whether you are part of a company or whether you are a freelance coder all of this stuff's really important and even as a freelancer to be able to demonstrate a good awareness of security to give you a good platform towards getting some kind of ISO accreditation or to get some sort of uh, PCI um, DSS accreditation, whatever it is you're after, all of that's really helpful if you have a basic process to hang these things from. So as usual, comments, questions, etc. please pop them below. Otherwise, I shall see you in the next video.